Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 40, where you send me your Flat Earth questions, and I will do my best to answer them either on Strange World, which is Tuesday nights on True Frequency Radio, or right here on YouTube. So let's get right to it. First email is called Idea for the Flat Earth Conference. And this is sent to both Patricia and myself. Hey, you guys, you and Mark were speaking of Subaru being a partner in the Flat Earth Conference. And I was thinking even Subway has recently come up with a new slogan for their flatbread. It's called Flat is the New Curve. It goes so well with the Flat Earth movement. It's unbelievable. Maybe Subway could also be like a food partner at the conference. I think it will do well for both. Everyone needs a snack, their food is relatively healthy, and their new slogan can't be more pro-Flat Earth. I hope you reply to my mail or acknowledge it. I've already been mailing Mark, Jaron, DITRH, Bob, and many others of my favorite content providers, but in vain. Love everything that you guys do. Can't wait for the world to know the actual shape of the Earth. Cheers, Kenneth Vaz. And you're absolutely right, Kenneth. So much so that what I did was... I, um... I looked for the Subway uh, Flat, Earth, Flat is the New Curve, which is only airing currently in India. Subway is out in India, and that's the only place they've got this flat bread. I, I'm sure they test, tested it in the United States, but didn't do, didn't do very well. But the commercial is pretty cool, so I put that on my channel. So Flat is the New Curve by Subway. It's excellent. This next one's called Views that don't work on a ball and somebody sent me a whole bunch of pictures so there's no lot of text and i can't really tell you what's going on there this next one's called hey mark idea for bumper sticker t-shirt hat blurb etc hi mark just thought of a flat earth saying if it hasn't been used before in light of the recent u.s election how would this be wake um, oh make america flat again just an idea thanks steve bastache oh bastache like moustache bastache like moustache Cool. Thanks, Steve. This one's called Flat Earth. Why theory has had a resurgent. Hey, mate. It's hit mainstream newspapers in Australia. We're getting to them. Regards, Rob Bishop. And he sends me an article. And the article is from an Australian newspaper called news.com.au. The Flat Earth theory has seen a resurgence with people trying to prove our planet is not a sphere. That's a great article, and it's quite long, and I think even IPS talked about it on one of his things. So that's awesome. This next one's called Your Opinion. Mark, do you remember the guy who floated up into the atmosphere of space inside a space capsule? Then he jumped out and did a free fall back to Earth and landed with a parachute. It did, if, if did see it when it was live on the NASA channel. This is verbatim. NASA channel, do you believe that it was true or was a hoax? Thanks. Uh, Jashan Burden, and yeah, no, you're talking about the Red Bull jump, and absolutely, it was a hoax. You can you can look at the fisheye lens is incredible. Look, if you're going to use a fisheye lens, at least use one where the the curve isn't so blatantly uh, overstated, because he was only at 20 miles up and or 20, 22, 23 miles up, and the curve was huge. It was immense. Which the curve was so bad that the Earth would have been only I don't know a thousand miles wide, if that. Because remember, if you believe mainstream science, then the Earth is 8,000 miles wide. But no, the curve was, was way worse. And for anyone that thinks that that, that is real, by all means, email me. And, or you, you don't have to email me. But I've got videos. I've got a little 11 meg file of the balloon. One of the Even just one of the balloon footages uh, where it's at 121,000 feet. And it is a perfectly flat all the way around. And I use it for my backdrop all the time. So, yeah, if it's 121,000 feet and it's perfectly flat, then how at only a few thousand feet higher is it severely curved? This next one's called Mirror Image. Interesting. Hi, Mark. If the dome was raised upon vertical walls, would the southern walls reflect the stars from the ceiling, thus creating a distorted mirrored effect from the northern stars? Note that dome buildings have vertical walls. Regards, Dave. Hmm. Interesting. I don't think it completely solves all the optical problems, but I, I like where you're going with that. It's good. You know, Flat Earth opens the minds of people. They, they, they let them explore possibilities they never thought were possible beforehand. The next one's called, Is There a Way? Mark, is there a way to get in touch with Rob Skiba? I write a Christian superhero comic book for my church, and I'd like to correspond with him about Yahweh's footstool 
and the Nephilim for it. He's apparently very hard to get in touch with, and I've already tried his website. I was just wondering if you had an email address or if you could ask him to email me for security reasons. Thanks, Darren Wagner in La Crosse, Wisconsin. That's very interesting because La Crosse is where I had my family reunion, the Purvis family reunion, English family. No, no, I'm sorry. It was the stock, stock side, stock side, S-T-A-A-K, German side was in La Crosse, Wisconsin. 20 years ago big family reunion i don't think we've had one since the yeah darren what i'll do is i will cut and paste this you're absolutely right rob is very hard to get a hold of busy guy super busy in the christian flat earth community so i will make sure he gets your email and hopefully he'll get back to you i can't make any promises but you never know Sometimes he's receptive. This one's called British Columbia joins the club. Yes, you may read on air. See, that's what you're supposed to do. If I'm not supposed to read on air, most people are fine with it. But if I'm not supposed to, let me know the title of it or the first line of the email. Don't tell me at the very end. Write this big thing uh, buried in your soul and all this wonderful information at the very end. It's like, oh, by the way, this is totally confidential between you and me. Don't do that because a lot of the times, because I like to react to the email firsthand, you know, just do it right now. Anyway, you, you get what I'm saying. So this is, he sent me the It's Flat license plate. He goes, the It's Flat license plate club. Because I don't wear slogan t-shirts, so I got the plate instead. I love how the provinces, he's talking about Canada, work, uh, working works so well on the plate. Beautiful, It's Flat, British Columbia. Shalom, Mark. I am a huge fan of your work and wanted to say thank you for all you do. You have changed my world for the better in so many ways. Here is the supper short version. Supper? Is that really? Is that a Canadian thing? If I play the six degrees of separations game, you uh, flat earth Rob Skiba, who flat earth the friend of my cousin, who flat earth my cousin, who in turn flat earth me and my brother. And because of Flat Earth and the Torah, we have become very close. I don't even know how to begin to thank you. I also have a small niche YouTube channel called R-A-Q-I-A, Hebrew for Firmament, where I talk about Hebrew words and hint about Flat Earth with them. I also hope to do some Flat Earth experiments soon that I will add to the channel later. P.S. Do you know of any Flat Earth meetups in the Pacific Northwest? Keep it flat. Kevin Chapman from Abbotsford, British Columbia, and he leaves his cell phone number, which I'm not going to give out. And there's a picture of his Flat Earth license plate. If you guys want to shoot me your Flat Earth license plate or the digital image that you get from the licensing department before they send you the plate, because sometimes it can take as little as three weeks and as many as three months, I will put it in the license plate compilation. We've got a whole bunch in the United States and at least half of the Canadian provinces right now. I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, you can email those to me at msargent23 at comcast.net. And as far as answering this guy's question, hopefully Kevin is listening to this right now. Yeah, when it comes to the Northwest, I've already done one in Seattle and two in Canada. If there's any more that come up real soon, you know, I will put it, I'll put the ad on my channel and, and you won't be able to miss it. So, thank you for that. Okay, this one's called OK, It's Flat. Mark, I jumped on a ticket to the convention in November. Hope it is still on because I haven't received any feedback or tickets. My question for your show, unless it's already been asked, is if the moon is the firmament, why couldn't man go to the moon? Isn't the hard shell beyond the firmament or are there two shells, one between earth and the heavenly bodies and one between the heavenly bodies and the throne? Just asking Donald Ray. And yeah, he was the one that also sent the, yeah, the Oklahoma, it's, oh, Oklahoma, it's flat. That's why he, he titled it in the beginning. He abbreviated Oklahoma to OK, and I thought it was just OK. The, quite, let me answer the question there. Uh, no, I don't think you can land on the moon. I'm sure they tried to do something on the moon. I mean, it may not even be a physical object, something you can land on, although it does seem to uh, be self-illuminated, which implies that it's its own, uh, you know, there's its own object and you might be able to land on it. But I don't know. It might be a little risky. It'd be like trying to land on your ceiling light. It might be a little dicey, a little tougher than what they were portraying. So might be possible, might not be. Uh, I'd kind of lean towards not. Just saying. This one's called Just a Thought Mark. Mark, if mobile phones use satellites for GPS, how come it doesn't work on airplanes? It's closer to satellites. Proves they are ground-based towers. Chris Moore in UK. You know, good. yeah, good points. They 
don't some some planes though you, they they do allow that sort of thing it, it pipes through the plane system and in fact i just got a video this morning which i'll probably maybe i'll include in this one uh, depends if i if i'm doing emails i usually do a video thing you know what I, I will it's called balloon satellite south america where a listener had sent it to me where a balloon a weather balloon with a big satellite attached to it went down in south america and it landed softly enough in the trees that it was in perfect condition. So it could be, again, There's, I think there's stuff floating around up there, but I do not think there's satellites in orbit that were put up in rockets. At the at most, I think they are they are suspended by balloons, and oh, this video is a, a great example of that. Or they're being rerouted through military high-altitude air, air, aircraft, like spy planes. Why not? Uh, balloons, I think, are cheaper than using spy planes. Everyone goes for the cheaper option. This one's called Thanks. Hey, Mark, thanks for all the shout-outs earlier this week. The guys I work with got a kick out of it. Glad you like the cookies. Those monster cookies are the freaking best. I participated in some chat takeovers with OD, ODD TV yesterday. That shows how old, how far back I'm, I'm, I'm behind in emails. That was pretty fun. Have a good weekend. Mike in Minnesota. He's the guy that sent me some cookies from, where is it? Oh, it wasn't oh crap cookies etc oh it's delicious you can have them shipped anywhere and they were probably the finest store-bought cookies as, as good as homemade in most cases i know they probably used a whole bunch of preservatives but it was they were fantastic i've never gotten a box as good as those not the knocking you guys send me other cookies that's totally cool and you can, again you can send me anything you want but the, the cookies i thought was kind of a neat thing i did when i was making the clues okay this one's called would you and Patricia be willing to promote our Colorado Flat Earth Billboard project? Hi, Mark. Thank you for all you've done to help our meetup grow here in Fort Collins. We at the Fort Collins Flat Earth and other forbidding topics meetup have started a fundraiser to rent a billboard space in Colorado to advance the Flat Earth awareness. Please take a look and see if this is something you can get behind and promote. And we are open to any ideas, changes, or suggestions you may have to make uh, this an effective and highly successful campaign. And you guys can, it's called Flat Earth Colorado. It's on GoFundMe.com if you want to be part of the new billboard. I, there's so many other little projects going on. I'm, I'm sorry I haven't dedicated more time to this, but I've been kind of caught up in all the meetups first. Those are my, my big priority, trying to get people together. And yeah, the, the billboards are great. And they may even reach more people, but I think the meetups are more intimate. And but So I've been focusing on those. But by all means, check out Flat Earth Colorado if you're interested in doing the GoFundMe for the billboard in Colorado. And you can probably call that guy if you're if you're more interested. You want to hit, find out if he's legit. His name's John Vanuck. He runs the Flat Earth Meetup in Fort Collins. His phone number is 970-218-3638. Moving on. This one's called Under the Dome. Hi, Mark. I was so surprised that you gave your contact info on the video. I hope you have not been so deluged, deluged that you changed it and you do not get this email. No, I'm, I'm, this is the only email I've had for 20-something years. This is such a new topic for me, and I tend to stay away from such things as they can be like a vacuum that just eats up valuable time. But when I first heard about this in an unusual way, I decided to do some research, and for the past week, I have practically been unable to do anything else. If this is true, uncovering the truth and exposing the lie is the most important thing we can do with our time for sure. I say that as a born-again Christian who believes the Genesis account. Anyway, I want to thank you for the approach you took to your video expose. It was very methodical and certainly a logical step-by-step -step explanation of how you came to your conclusions. I have watched quite a number of others since then, but yours stands out to me as the most informative and the best way to present this incredible story. Because of that, I wondered if you have any other specific resources I should look at or obtain to further my research on the topic. I've already downloaded the World Beyond the Poles book and plan to read it over the next week or so. I'm a freelance writer, so I have to go back to my work in order to pay the bills. I would appreciate any shortcuts to other information you might recommend that would help me bypass some of the less credible stuff out there and waste my time. Truthfully, a lot of it seems to be like a hip-hop approach, which does not appeal me. I tried to call your number this morning, but after a few rings and no answer, I thought it best to email you instead. If this is a good number and you don't regret giving it out, uh, let me know good time and I will do that again. Thanks, Craig Marlat. You know what, Craig? I am going to email you the link to what I recommend 
in my channel, which is called, there's a, I, I make a bunch of playlists, but the playlist I recommend for new people is literally called the Flat Earth Shortlist for New People. So I will send that to him. But if anyone, it's, and it's not, in fact, 99% of it, I don't even know if I'm even on it. It's just like 20, 25 videos of the, you know, the best introduction and early to mid-level videos on Flat Earth. This next one's called Magnetic Locking. Mark, why couldn't magnetic locking of high-altitude observation platforms, as per Ashley Webster's video, be considered in place of orbiting satellites and ISS? I don't know. This is actually the, that's the first time I've even heard of that term, magnetic locking. Uh, are you talking about magnetically locking a physical metal thing in place at high altitude? Because that would be an advanced technology that would lead to other things, which I don't think would be released to anybody. But it's interesting. Interesting. I'll have to revisit some of her stuff. This one's called Just Started My Flat Earth Research. Mark, I just watched on your videos on YouTube. I stumbled across the Flat Earth Phenomenon or Flat Earth Questions, if you will. I know just a few names in this movement, Jaron, Rob Skiba, and some others. I'm a 55-year-old male and have tried to discuss this with older, wise friends, and I was shocked at the response I received. Ridicule, laughter, even hate, and the name-calling when all I was doing was asking questions. What in the world is this? All I have asked was an open mind and an open discussion with men I respected. The first, first response I got was, if the flat earth is true, then the entire space program would have to be fake. Everything from satellites to landing on the moon would be fake. Exactly, I said. He couldn't go there. There was no way he could even begin to entertain that possibility. And then, he was done. Unfortunately, he died before I could re-engage him. Why why do I have to see that? I'm just wondering what all this name... I'm hoping he didn't kill him. What all this name-calling and heated hatred type passion is coming from. Seriously, you didn't kill him, right? Thank you for your time. I'm just asking questions and long to see if I can get answers and if they seem to make sense to me. That is all. I am not stomping my feet and saying the earth is flat. Listen to me, I know. I am just a guy who sends to have... who sends to have sinned into others who have asked some of the same questions that I have asked and am amazed by the response I've gotten from well-educated men that I have always respected. Would you have any guidance for me? Sincerely yours, Joseph Riddle, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah, be careful about who you bring this up to. Again, the, the Flat Club, Fight Club reference is very valid, which is you've got to size up your audience. If they are not, do not believe in any other conspiracies at all, if they think that 9-11 and Sandy Hook and Boston bombing and JFK and the, and the moon landing is absolutely as presented, face value, then you probably shouldn't go after them. And if you insist on going after them, use the Darren Nesbitt technique, which is you've got to go after the uh, uh, you've got to go after the moon mission first you've got to attack the moon mission first so okay moving on this one's called quick idea mark let's have the biggest flat earth meetup at the kennedy space center all pretend to be visitors well, that's not bad and he also sent that to ips so yeah that's that's good i like that this one's called Foo Fighters, Flat Earth, Perfect. Hi, Mark. I have not heard anyone mention the Foo Fighters. The Pretender as a possible song about the Flat Earth. Dave Grohl has said that he did not want to reveal the meaning of this song because it was better for people to make their own interpretation, and that is the fun. He also said that the real meaning of this song is too controversial to talk about. To me... The song fits the flat earth like a glove, and it also rocks. <laughs> also rocks. I would love to see someone use it making a video about NASA or as an intro to videos. I've copied some of the lyrics below. Please give it a listen before dismissing. Most people assume it was about wars in Iraq or political disagreement. Dave, on the other hand, only says maybe something like that. So the lyrics to The Pretender by the Foo Fighters, and I'll rattle it off real quick here. Keep you in the dark, you know they all pretend. Keep you in the dark, and so it all began. Send in your skeletons. Sing as their bones go marching in again. The need you buried deep, the secrets that you keep are ever ready. Are you ready? 
I'm finished making sense, done pleading ignorance, that whole defense. Spinning infinitely, boy, the wheel is spinning me. It never, it's never ending, never ending, same old story. What if I say I'm not like the others? What if I say I'm not just another one of your plays? You're the pretender. What if I say I will never surrender? What if I say I'm not like the others? What if I say I'm not just another one of your plays? You're the pretender. What if I say that I'll never surrender? In time, your soul, our soul untold, I'm just another soul for sale. Oh, well, the page is out of print. We are not permanent. We're temporary, temporary, same old story. What if I say I'm not like the others? And you know that chorus. And then I'm the voice inside your head you refuse to hear. I'm the face that you have to face mirrored in your stare. I'm what's left. I'm what's right. I'm the enemy. I'm the hand that will take you down, bring you to your knees. So who are you? Yeah, who are you? Keep you in the dark. You know they all pretend. That's it. Uh, keep up the good work, Mark. Sincerely, a concerned citizen. <laughs> Sent from Proton Mail Mobile. Nice. It's really, really cool. This one's called Recommendation for the Best All-Encompassing Flat Earth Video. Hi, Mark. My brother finally agreed to watch one or two Flat Earth videos. He's the first person in my family that will actually do it, although he thinks that it's totally BS, but willing to humor me. He still believes in the missions to the moon, space shuttles, and ISS-2. I came to Flat Earth about two years ago and have watched probably in excess of 100 videos on topics relating to Flat Earth. So many more tests have been done since then will be be the super zoom cameras so I'm asking you to recommend a couple videos that may actually help you open his eyes also have you been able to speak to anyone able that code in the sky photo I sent you no rush just curious thanks Mark sincerely Jerry no I I haven't I haven't been able to speak in, with anyone about the photo but what I will do is I will send you also the list of the, the flatter short list for new people I'll send you the link in the email so that's going in the address after I'm done recording this pile. This one's called the Dave Marsh Moon Race. Hi Mark, great hangout last night. Here is the link to my video Moon Race. I never made a video before the Flat Earth Awakening, but I'm improving each time I make a new one. And the link goes to a YouTube video called Flat Earth colon Moon Race. Awesome. And I will... Um, I will forward that on to people. That's awesome. You know what? I don't think that showed up in my search thing because he's got a colon right next to flat earth. You know, Boolean strings are very specific. And if you are listening to this, Dave, you take make sure if you're going to you do flat earth colon or flat earth semicolon or flat earth anything else, hyphen, make sure you put a space between the the H in earth and whatever you're going to put. Because some because otherwise, if I type in flat earth into the Boolean strings, it'll, it'll put it, if, if it shows up at all, it's going to be way, way down on the list. Which is why I missed it. I mean, I was looking at this thing and I've never seen that video before. And it was out. In fact, when did he put this thing out? He put this thing out on February 26th. And I have literally not seen it until now. So hopefully I'll get some more hits on that. All right. This one's from Karen Pettit. She's talking about a hangout that we did. Uh, it's called Friday. Mark, thank you. My group were, were chuffed. I think that's a British thing. We thought you were very nice. Please come to the UK convention. Life just gets better. We start a video club this weekend. We are trying to become a community, trust each other, help each other. Many say they're family. Sometimes we are at hangouts, most nights creating this. Plus, we have our data, which I hope you found interesting, plus researchers. We would definitely like another group hangout. Shall I organize the other hangout uh, first with Santos, as of Dave and Santos are yeah, our way at the moment? Yeah, and then we ended up doing one. That was fantastic. So thank you, Karen. That's great. She's uh, part of one of the organizers for the Flat Earth Conference that's happening in the UK. This one's called Flatpool. Has shared with you a video. And it's called Full ISS Expedition 51 Soyuz MS-03 Undocking and Departure from ISS. Which is probably fake as hell okay so I'll get rid of that sorry I'm just kind of going through these as fast as I can and I also got shared a playlist and the playlist is called FE history by Flatpool Flatpool is the YouTube channel so check that out when you get a chance it's great 
This one's called Mount Rainier Visible from 130 to 160 miles away. Mark, my name is Chuck and I live in Kennewick, Washington. I can see my my Rainier. It's Mount Rainier from Kennewick and have seen it from outside of Othello, Washington. As the crow flies, Kennewick is about 130 miles away and Othello is even further. Wondering if you knew if this should be possible with the curvature of the Earth. Or Earth thanks. Well, it depends where, again, you're going to have to do your math yourself. Uh, if you're talking from peak to peak, yeah, it might be possible, but even 130 miles peak to peak, you're going to get, you know, you are going to be looking down over the hill quite a ways. So there's some calculators out there. You'll you'll find them. This one's called Dave Matthews Flat Earth Song. Mark, have you heard this? It's called Dave Matthews Dodo. And the lyrics go something like this. It, Once upon a time when the world was just a pancake, fears would arise that if you went too far, you'd fall. But the passage of time, it all became more of a ball. We're as sure of that as we all once were when the world was flat. So I wonder this, as life billows smoke inside my head, this little game where nothing is sure. Why would you play by the rules? Why did you? Why did you? When I, when, when was it killed, the very last dodo bird? And was she aware she was the very last one? So I wonder this, as life billows smoke inside my head, this little game where nothing is sure. Why would you play by the rules? Who did you did you you say who did you did you if all the things that you are saying now were true enough but still what is all the worrying about we can work it out oh i wonder this as life below smoke inside my head the little game where nothing is sure why would you play by the rules who did you did you it's good so check that out it's dave matthews band the song is called dodo awesome this one's called SpaceX. Hi, Mark. If you want proof SpaceX is a fraud, take a look at the latest launch. In about 12 minutes, they start showing the Earth from orbit with the Earth moving left to right when they switch cameras and the Earth is now moving from right to left. How? Both shots are looking backwards at the engine nozzle, but from different angles. Imagine you're on a train with seats facing each other. You're sitting looking out the window from the forward facing seat and the trees are passing you from the front of the train to the back then change seats to the rear facing seats the trees are still passing you from the front of the train to the back it's just the angle that's changed not the direction regards neil thanks neil it's good stuff this one's called i created a website for flat earthers called flat earth meetups.com hi mark my family my family and I have been enjoying your videos and all your hard work for over a year now, so I thought I would email you directly about this. I happen to be a web developer with some free time on my hands, so I'm working on a website called flatearthmeetups.com. I recently started making YouTube videos and I made a video in introducing it. Like I say in the video, I'll be adding new features all the time and hoping for some feedback from the community to guide Fe feature development, I think he meant future, future development, although feature development is probably accurate as well. I don't know if anything will come of this or if it's just my crazy dream to want to meet up with other flat earthers. Haha. Ha. Have a great Sunday, Eric Young. Great, yeah. Uh, and he wrote this as the, the, he built that just as the meetups were happening, which is great. This one's called I Have a Saying Now. Hey, Mark, my name is Scott and I work at a cement company. I'm a loader operator who mines the limestone necessary to make our final product, cement. I am a fairly, I am fairly young for my industry, sub 40 years of age, and I drive the older guys crazy with my new ideas. One of the things I do, and it shocks me for how old school my industry is that no one thought of this prior to me, is that when we are working on a quarry floor developed on a new lower level, I use the groundwater to keep the floor level. Attempting to keep a floor level using a machine the size of a house using only your senses is very difficult, especially at night in the pitch black with only headlights. So what I began doing is using the natural elements of the water below the floor and my bucket teeth to tell me where level is. It never fails. Mile after mile of development and I'm never off. My quarry floors are always level. Put the bucket teeth down and scrape the floor and you'll find water. One of the largest costs of mining is getting the water out of the hole. $30,000 last month, I believe, running pumps to get the water out. So I use that resource to my advantage. The water never lies. It's always It always levels out. 
I was a big alien UFO guy and one day I stumbled upon a flat earth video and I thought, holy crap, this is what I've thought my whole life. It was easy for me. It makes sense. I never bought the globe model entirely. I was terrible in school because I questioned everything. I couldn't absorb facts because I challenged everyone. In fact, I often feel cheated because I know I'm a smart guy, but my grades didn't reflect that because I challenged everything. I could go on forever, but I'll let you go. Oh, my new phrase when it comes to the flat earth is, you will laugh when you first hear flat earth and you will laugh harder after you do your own research. And that's from Scott Rodriguez, sent from my iPhone. That's great. Thanks, Scott. This one's called Under the Dome Full Documentary. Hello, sir. I just wanted to ask you, is there air in space? Space hereby referring to the normal perception of it in the world today. I am always wondering how rockets and other machines are able to use thrust in space since as far as I know you would need air for that thrust to push against. I have always been taught that space means totally devoid of anything including air. I have never had anyone to ask these questions so I'll be very happy if you reply to this email. Thank you. No, there's no air in space. No. No, when you get up when you get the air thins out, but I think there's a barrier. I think we're in a enclosed slash compressed system that we're in a building so everything's everything's inside here including the atmosphere outside of this don't know unlimited universe probably this one's called long distance photography website and it's from chip mark check out beyond horizons dot eu in fact if you click on like beyond horizons dot eu it shows you yeah all the home of the current distance site world record yeah in fact, you know what? I'm going to save that and put that in my... I like that one so much, and I'm sorry I didn't do that earlier because I know he sent it at least three weeks ago. I'm going to put that in my description. I'm going to update all my descriptions in the videos, and I'm going to put that so people look. And they say, look, here's the longest... You know, People go out of their way to see how far they can see into the distance, so that's fantastic. This one's called TV Reference Antarctic Treaty. In Hey Mark, in the HBO House of Cards Season 5, Episode 13, near the end of the episode, Claire Underwood is addressing the nation. She says that Russia and China broke the treaty and tried to drill there. That's all. Thanks. Flat Earth Vegan Amy. Wow. I did not know that. That's really, really cool. I should, I should look that one up. This one's called... Need some water. U.S. money with flat earth messages, images. Uh, feel free to use and tweet from Mac Parhar. And he's out in uh, British Columbia, Delta in, in British Columbia. And what he did was he took Canadian, U.S. money or Canadian money? Hang on a second. View all images. He took, if I can punch this up real fast. Come on. Taking too long. Oh, yeah, he took American money. And he wrote flat earth stuff all over it. Mostly on the back. Earth is flat. Uh, Earth is flat. YouTube, flat Earth clues. Awesome. Super great. Thank you. Thank you very much for doing that. And he wrote it, it looked like in Sharpie marker. Not that I encourage people to deface money, but hey, use the tools that are available to you. This one's called Flat Earth. Go figure. And it is a picture of a Jeep tire. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I include this in the license plate compilation. compilation. Somebody in, in Oregon used their spare tire cover on their back of their Jeep and turned it into a giant flat earth map with a whole bunch of quotes on it. And that was great. That's from Sean. Sean did a fantastic job. So if you want to see that one, just go to the latest. And if you don't see it in the one... I, in fact, if he sent this... When did he send this? If he sent this in June... He did, so it won't be in June, it'll be in July. So the very next compilation I'm going to do, I'm going to release in two days, you'll see it there. So thank you, Sean, for doing that. And Very, very cool. Very, very cool. This one's called Thank You. Mark, just wanted to say a big thank you for exposing the evidences of plain flat earth. I listen to you and Rob Skiba regularly and am constantly challenging my knowledge of what we've all been taught about the globe. Question, have you talked to any airline pilot or mechanic who can confirm the planes have mechanical and not electronic gyroscope? 
It seems that this would certainly prove 100% flat Earth other than a reverse shot from orbiting satellites. Thank you again for everything you present. You guys stay courageous in the effort to reveal the truth, Scott. And yes, yeah, Scott, it, I've talked to several pilots that have, that have talked about the, the gyroscope stuff and, and military people. So go ahead and go to the testimony playlist. It's testimony shows by subject matter experts and look up the pilots and listen to them. They've got some great stuff in there. This one's called Debunking Antarctic Time Lapse 24 Hour Sunlight. Hey Mark, this is my biggest problem. It, is, it does look like the YouTube videos are all edited, but seems to be the hardest thing to debunk with the Antarctic maps, with all the bases, new Anthony, Anthony Bourdain. Really? You're going to quote Anthony Bourdain from CNN? Parts Unknown episode where he goes there and all the crew says they see it. Any take on this? Thanks, Ben. I don't trust it. I mean... N not knocking a cook, you know, a chef, but look, he's a chef on a CNN show. CNN is controlled from minute one. Remember, CNN, where they were there during the Sandy Hook thing. CNN, CNN's been involved in everything. You cannot trust them. So if CNN goes down, seriously, man, the fact you're asking me that, come on, come on, Ben. You're, you're saying that, oh yeah, CNN says they saw the Antarctic sun, really? CNN also covers the space program. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not trying to pick. I'm just saying. You should know better than that. This here, the Sean, oh yeah, the, the Jeep thing again. Fantastic. You've done a good job spreading the truth. And let's see here, moving on. This one's called Just Looking for Your Opinion on This Link. Hi, I'll make this short. Like so many others, I've been going down the rabbit hole of YouTube and it's becoming draining. I was wondering if you had some time to link me some references other than YouTube. Other, also, what's your take on this? And then he gives, sends me an article, The Universe in Pictures. Uh, every photo has a black bar across it as if it was cropped or blacked out, and the black bar is covering icons on a computer. And let me click on the link real quick, and hopefully nothing crashes. And as I'm clicking this from slate.com, it's nothing's happening. So yeah, anything when it comes to space stuff is faked. I don't know where that link sent me hope oh, but nothing's happening on my machine so we'll just move on this one's called i have a saying now follow-up hi mark i wanted to send a follow-up to you that goes along with my first email my wife goes crazy when i mentioned flat earth and when i was sending my original email she said are you emailing about flat earth <laughs> probably with a rolling pin in her hand do people, women actually still hit men with rolling pins? So I kind of expedited my first email. No, were you, were you writing this out of the house somewhere? He's probably in a coffee shop. One of the reasons I felt the need to follow up was because of one of the questions you always ask the people who inter you interview on your show. You always ask, how did you wind up here becoming or turning into a flat earther? I myself was completely convinced 9-11 was an inside job. It didn't take any convincing, but rather I was seeking supporting evidence. In 2014, I began working at or for a cement company in Pennsylvania and after a few months of working there I really began to appreciate the strengths of concrete. A year into my employment there I moved into the quarry. And oh this is not the water level but you'd think it'd be a report repeat but it's not. One of our jobs is to always be developing our quarries. In order for us to move further along the development of our north quarry we needed to knock down or implode an old group of silos that was of no use to us anymore. This was a very popular project within our company because you don't get to implode buildings every day. It drew attention from our corporate people from around the country. So much so that people were flying in from all over to watch the silos come down. The silos were a group of four silos connected by one main column in the middle, and they were 80 feet high. The demolition team drilled hundreds of holes into the silos themselves in the main column. All that needed to be done was to hit the bottom and watch them fall. The order was given, the button was pushed, the charges went off as expected, and WTF. They cracked and some holes were, they cracked and some holes were. Lone blown into the walls but the silos remained eight hours later after more holes were drilled and more charges were layered into the walls and boom wtf the silos were still standing two days later and two more blasts the silos finally fell after all was said and done and the rubble cleanup had begun i looked at a co-worker and said that was the only four hollow that was only four hollow silos that were in shoddy condition at best and only eight stories high. And you mean to tell me the Twin Towers just fell? No effing way. 
that moment re-sparked my search for info into 9-11 and somehow a Flat Earth video came out, came up somehow and I thought to myself, you know what, why not? Uh, you wouldn't think your government would just murder the innocent. Uh, what would keep them from hiding this? I don't know. I just thought it was an interesting story. Good luck and God bless. I want to do what I can to expose the truth. Anything I can do to help, let me know. I would love to talk to you just to know that you are real as well and that I'm not crazy. You mentioned this and people just look at you like, oh man, you're one of those people. I get offended because I'm thinking and you're one of those people. Close-minded and programmed. Thanks for reading Scott Rodriguez again. Thanks, Scott. Two great quarry stories. And I do not get a lot of quarry stories. That's awesome. Okay, this one's called... This is how they fake the ISS with VR. Check this out. This will blow your mind. And you can go... You can check that out as missioniss.magnopus.com. And it's a description. It looks like it's NASA endorsed. Explore the International Space Station 250 miles above Earth with the Oculus Rift and Touch in this simulation experience developed in collaboration with the people, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, yeah NASA actually has a little VR spin around 360 thing you can do. This one's called Petri Dish. Mark, the can. Am missing project is what made me consider Flat Earth as a possibility, otherwise known as the missing 411 books. Author David Paulides ties together cases with strange, unexplained circumstances. The park services are cover are covering up these disturbances. I'm sorry, disappearances. Eyes are all blurry today. It seems like there's enough evidence to show we are being experimented on, and you look at GMOs, chemtrails. And now CRISPR, C-R-I-S-P-R, gene editing, to name a few. I'm curious to know what you and the Flat Earth community thinks about this. Thanks, Mark. Isaac. Uh, I don't really spend that much time on it, to be honest. Everything other than the Flat Earth is second and third tier and so on. The Flat Earth is the highest tier until something bigger comes along. It's, it's the world we live in. It's the biggest thing that's ever been hidden in the history of our civilization. So as far as missing people, yeah, could it dovetail in the flat earth? Sure. Why not? Uh, you know, if the older civilizations are, are roaming around, I think they have the ability to pick off people here and there, maybe in national parks, maybe out in boats. Uh, but they're not going to land in a major city. They haven't yet. And I know they're up there. So, yeah, could be possible. This one's called Attention My Dear. Oh my. Dear. <laughs> I'm going to read this one just for the heck of it. You ready? I am Bar Pascal Fadeki, a private lawyer to English Philippe, my client from your country, who was a director of Mick Construction Company here in the Republic of Benin. On the 5th of March 2011, my client lost his life as a result of brain cancer. Oh my God, it's an old. It's, this is an old scam, but I'm going to read it. In Benin Medical Center, if this regards... I Remember, I'm reading this as is. I wish to inform that the bank has issued me a notice to provide the next of kin of his account, which will soon be confiscated, since I have been unsuccessful in locating the relatives of my late client over four years. Now I seek your consent to present to you uh, the bank as of the next of kin of the deceased so that the proceeds of this account, valued at $6.3 million, will be paid into your bank account. Note, upon transaction conclusion, I will request to be entitled to 50% of the total sum, while 50% will be for you. After reading this message, reply to me that I will tell you how we can legally proceed this claim. All it requires is your honest cooperation to enable us to see this transaction through, and it will be mo kept confidential. Please send your full name, age, address, private mobile and home phone, occupation, and position. And for privacy, please reply to this email address. Uh huh. And it's lawfile001 uh, office at yoho.com. Best regards, Barista Pascal Fadiki. And he gives out his phone number. That's awesome. He's been doing this so long. You know, these scams came out pretty much since the internet was invented. The, the He's been doing this scam so long that he hasn't even updated, literally has not updated this email in six years. He's been doing this. At the very least, he's been just cranking this sucker out for six years, preying on greedy, stupid Americans. 
Yeah, oh, yeah, I'll send you a million. I, I, I'll get half. You get half. It'll be totally legit above board. And then he'll ask what the scam is. They, the, they ask you for processing fees. Just send me a couple thousand dollars to make sure everything goes to the bank, and then you'll get this massive check at the end. And people see, you know, this big carrot at the end of the stick, and they a lot of people go for it. And it's amazing to see that this scam is still going on. That and, of course, uh, penis enlargement pills, which is a completely different scam for a different reason. But you know what? We'll go into that at a different time. They don't work, by the way. Never have. Okay, this one's called Why Not Much Mention of August Picard. Hi, Mark. I've listened to many of your interviews and many times you talk about how us ordinary folks can't get up into space to actually see the flat earth. But one man, is it August or August? August? August. Picard did get up into the upper atmosphere before NASA and did report that uh, the earth seemed like a flat disk with upturned edges. Why don't you mention this fact more? Thanks, Mike. You know, up until last year, I didn't even know that really was a thing. I have to, I have to admit to you, uh, it it really it really caught fire once that Scotch ad came out. I don't remember the the name of the Scotch ad because they were referencing uh, Picard and his son, who was a deep sea di um, uh, submersible guy. So interesting though. I, I'll, I'll try to mention it more if I can. But other people have jumped on it. This one's called Three Things. Mark, I am personally acquainted with a pilot captain for Delta. I recently asked him. About the issues related to east-west flying, given the alleged speed of Earth's rotation, if the Earth is spinning a thousand miles an hour to the east and his plane is traveling easterly at 500 miles an hour, how does he ever arrive at his eastern des destination? Conversely, if Earth spins a thousand miles an hour easterly and his plane is traveling 500 miles an hour westerly, why is the flight time from Atlanta to LA the same as from LA to Atlanta? He had no answer to this riddle. I recently had dinner with a retired successful engineer who had his own firm in Chicago. I asked if he was familiar with spherical geometry. He was. I asked him why the 8 inches per mile by the mile squared is never factored into an engineer's construction of roads, rail tracks, and canals. He paused, stated that my question was most interesting, and had no answer. Finally, the sun is said to migrate between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn at the 23.5 degree parallel north and south. However, I live at the 33 degree parallel north, and if I face due west as the sun is setting, the sun is very slightly off to my right. If I am at 33 and the sun's northern track is 23.5, shouldn't the sun appear to my left when facing due west? Dan from Texas. A lot of information there. I don't know the answer to that, that third one. Uh, hopefully somebody else can write me and, and break it down for me. But since it's a podcast, I, it's going to be tough to, to hit you with the visuals on that one. This one's called New Sport. Mark, I'm really enjoying your Flat Earth video. I watched 27 minutes so far. <laughs> Great. So he, he found one of the Flat Earth compilations, which is two hours long, and he emailed me. 27 minutes in. I believe the globalists want us dumbed down and arrested. This is why they have engineered soccer as the global sport. Soccer players follow handcuff rules where they are not allowed to use their hands. This unfair, guilty before innocent mindset creates a complete disregard for local authority. This is why the referee is crowded and there's so much hooliganism. Sport should be celebration of nationalism, a celebration of life, liberty, and property. It should not arrest any of these things by handcuffing the arms and hands by the way if a sport well you kind of in in soccer slash football you kind of have to do that because if you let them uh, if you allowed their hands and arms then it would be rugby which is a completely different sport anyway by the way if a sport does not have dribbling it must have tackling unless you give the defensive team the ball like in baseball and in cricket but baseball and cricket do not attempt intercept passes or use defensive players to obstruct running offensive players. Anyway, I have invented a new sport. You can watch it by clicking here. Oh, I, you know what? I'm, I don't even know if I want to click it. Uh, it goes to a YouTube video. You know what? I'm going to click on it. And it was removed. <laughs> he put it up there and then it was removed. He invented a brand new sport, put it on a video, and then it was pulled. Maybe because of negative comments? I don't know. This one's called, Hey Mark, great show. Can I please get a copy of your survival guide? Thank you, sir, Steve. And yes, you can. And I think I already did send it to him, hopefully. If I didn't, Steve, let me know. 
the uh, the survival guide I made up a, a it's free I just put it on a PDF file it's only like two megs it's called empty shelves and it'll help you in the event that something really really bad happens most notably a long-term power outage I'm not gonna say for whatever reason meteors zombie locusts uh, who knows but it's uh, it'll it'll help you in that regards but my only recommendation is if you get it try to print out a copy because if the power goes out and all you have is the battery in your phone you're really going to be hating uh, that that guide because you won't be able to memorize it it's 100 pages long and if you want just email me msargent23 at comcast.net and i will just shoot it off to an email uh email to you this one's called sending you a few questions again please answer hi mark my name is chad I've been on this rabbit hole for about six months. I have a couple of questions that still hold me up, and I was wondering if you might answer them for me. Many people argue the fact that a plane would continue to tip its nose down to fly around the Earth. If gravity is true, why would this need to be? It is within the Earth's atmosphere. Gravity would be pulling the plane down as it flies and would continue to keep it level and plane with the Earth as it flies around it. Second question. Well, no, I disagree. You, you're, if it's... <laughs> If it's a curvature of the Earth, you're going to have to account. You can't say that gravity is perfectly either pulling the plane down or the plane is perfectly pulling itself up from it. The, the plane has to be constantly adjusting for this in one way or the other, and that's going to be mechanical. You cannot say that gravity and inertia is, is perfectly balancing the whole thing. You can't do it. Statistically, highly unlikely. Second question. I know many people have said it's proof because the constellations do not change and if we we're spinning around and also spinning around the sun, the constellations would change. But what if these stars were all spinning around just like the Earth was? Oh boy, here we go. Now, you know, you're, you're talking about synchronicity. So, Earth spins, so the, do the stars all together. The Earth spins around the sun, the stars do. If everything works together, why would they change? Okay, I'll, let me answer, this, answer the second one. He's missing the, 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 the biggest part, which is if the whole solar system is moving, it's the bigger speed you got to care about. It's not the, the Earth in procession or the Earth going around the sun. It's the solar system flying in a sideways shotgun pattern through the galaxy at half a million miles an hour. That's a lot of speed. And the galaxy is moving at millions of miles an hour. That's a lot of speed. There's all these objects ranging from four light years away to millions of light years away, if you believe mainstream science, you are going to run into parallax. That's the term you're looking for. There's going to be parallax. The, the star, you're going to be changing perspectives on some of these stars. And it may not happen today, it may not happen tomorrow, but we don't have any records of the older constellations, meaning the constellations have been around for, what, thousands of years? And yet they're still the same constellations. So don't tell me that they don't change. That they're going to eventually. At the very least, the solar system flying through. And somebody do the math. Half a million miles an hour times 24 hours in a day times 365 days in a year times, let's just round, do a round one, a thousand years. That's a huge, huge number. Huge number. And one of, some of those stars are going to change perspective because of that number. So somebody come up with it for me. I'm not going to type it in right now. Last question. Not so much a question, but an observation that I have not heard and was wondering if it is new or simply that I am an idiot and it, it I sent a correct observa observation, hence why no one else has spoke on it. If gravity is real, wouldn't it have to be some sort of all-knowing being? What, like gravity is sentient? If gravity just is, it would have to use X amount of force to keep, say, a car on the ground. And if you use that same X amount of force to keep a small egg on the ground, would it not crush it? I don't know. Again, probably an idiot. Would love some answers. Thanks, man. Uh, again, it's a, that's a tough call because even mainstream science, I'll, I'll quote NDT, where he says that we can't tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does. And it seems to affect all objects equally. But for me, it's electromagnetic and it's built into the system. So it's still very, very similar to what it would be on a sphere, only on a flat disk. Hopefully that answered some of his stuff. Okay, do we have time for one more? Let's see what this next one is. Uh, this might be the last one, maybe. This one's called Some Questions. Hi, Mark. Just call me BB. I just wanted to start off by telling you thanks for opening my mind up to Flat Earth. I'm about 80% there, but still not sold on it, as I can't get past satellites. 
It's just too many people involved to hide such a big lie. Too many random theories as to how DirecTV, cell phones, GPS, and all sort of satellite communications work. What are these dishes pointing to? Are they bouncing off the dome? As you have theorized, is low Earth orbit possible with weight weightlessness? Uh, I've recently watched an episode of Morgan Freeman's Into the Wormhole where they focused on SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Satellite Dishes. The amount of money that's pumped into this institute is unbelievable. If the powers that be know that we're an enclosed flat plane with no space, stars, planets, why would they waste billions of dollars in a government institute like SETI? Uh, I don't know if it's billions, maybe millions a year, but I don't, I don't know if it's actually racked up to the billions. Billions, but anyway, you can say the same thing about NASA. Remember, NASA is into the trillions. That same episode also interviewed researchers that have received radio signals from the so-called space. Are they in the conspiracy too? No, no, of course not. Uh, two, with your knowledge of the Freemasons, I just wanted your thoughts on the Illuminati cards. One in particular, which says the flat earther no, the flat earthers. I know what the card says, but he said it wrong. The flat earthers know something. Also, what are your thoughts on who and why they made them and why are they so accurate in their predictions? Yeah, good point. Uh, the, in fact, I've, I, rumor has it that somebody's going to be sending me a deck of those cards. I don't know why they're so accurate. Other than you believe in predictive programming, the, there are people that have kind of known what the future is going to, how it's going to break down. And it's kind of a, a guide for those in the know. Three, lastly, I heard your interview with DH Podcast, and you've got my respect for not losing your cool and sticking to your beliefs, but it seemed to me like you were trying to feed them a lot of theories and not so much on the Flat Earth facts. Unfortunately, I think the only hard proof Flat Earth has is the lack of curvature. Everything else is speculation, theories, because of lack of proof by NASA. When trying to convince ball earthers, why don't you just stick to the curvature and push that agenda as an unbreakable fact that goes against NASA science members? Looking forward to hearing your response. Please read on your podcast. Thanks, BB. Uh, okay, but let me answer the, the earlier one first, and that is, look, money spent on SETI is nothing compared to the money spent on NASA. NASA gets $50 million a year. In fact, the uh, 2016 year, I believe they spent about $20 billion. $50 million a day. They're, they're, they're getting. So the amount of money that's being on, spent on SETI, that's nothing. NASA was created to keep this thing a secret. So a, a, all the other little expenditures are minor by comparison. When it comes to me talking to people about flat earth stuff, I hit them with everything that I can. I use a, a multiple pronged attack. Meaning, because some people they don't, they just don't get it. They, you know, I could, I could hit them with curvature, and if they're not seeing it, you've got to go somewhere else. You, you look for the weak spots. You look for things they're not comfortable with. You look for things they, they're not familiar with, and you hit them with it. The curvature, yeah, that's one aspect, and it's really, really good. Would I hang my hat of flat Earth on it? I can try, but if they're not, you know, people are receptive to different things, much like people in the flat Earth community. There's no one thing that turned on anyone to flat earth it's usually a lot a combination of little things which is why the clues were made in the way they were made they cover a lot of different aspects this is also the reason why science has a hard time going against us because there's no one thing they can fo focus their energy on they, yeah they can try to go after the curvature of the earth and if that doesn't work they'll try to go after nasa or they'll try to go after different optics or they'll try there's all sorts of different things they can they can bring up. We need as many weapons as we can. So yeah, the, the curvature is good, but remember, there's an opposition to it already. The, the most common one is they're gonna claim refraction. That's the big word they keep using. Oh, it's refraction, it's refraction, or it's a mirage. Well, if you, they that, that argument goes nowhere after a while because you're just saying, no, the curvature is not there, distance and, and the P900. They're gonna come back and just say refraction, refraction, mirage, mirage. It, you gotta go with some, something else. Anyway, let's end on that one because there was a we went through a whole bunch of emails. If you guys want to uh, shoot me your questions, send them to msargent23, that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will try to read them on Truth Frequency Radio. If I can't do it there, which is often because I take a lot of phone calls now, I will do it here. So until next time, guys, stay flat. <laughs>